A quick video on an interface cable I built to connect the new laptop to the FT817 that allows me to use digital modes like Whisper and others. Many laptops have only one connection for the audio input and output. That connection has a 3.5mm 4 connector plug. If all your other plugs are just 3.5mm stereo, then you'll need a Y cable like this. You could make it up or you could just get it cheaply on eBay. Connecting into that Y cable is a cable that you can make yourself. The audio output from the computer goes into the FT817's microphone connection and the audio input to the computer comes from the speaker connection on the FT817. I could have used the 817's rear accessory socket. However, the transmit Vox function is not enabled on it, at least without some internal modification, which I've seen described on a blog. To keep things simple, I'm just using the microphone socket for the audio coming into the transmitter and the speaker connection for the audio going out of it. What is this ugly looking thing? Underneath all the layers of heat shrink are two resistors and one capacitor for each of the audio connections. They form an attenuator. That's required because the audio coming out of the FT817 is much stronger than is needed for the input of the computer. And vice versa, the audio from the computer is much more than what the FT817's microphone input needs. Overloading can cause distortion on transmit and make receive signals less easy to decode because they're too much for the computer sound card. Because both the computer and the FT817 have variable controls to adjust the level, I've made these resistances fixed. That saves space but if you want to, you could use potentiometers instead. I used a blue Cat5 cable for the microphone connection. Only two of the eight wires were used. These go to the microphone connections on the FT817. First thing we'll do, we'll try some whisper on 30 meters. I'm using the WSJTX software by K1JT. On the left is an audio level display. If I turn the volume control of the FT817 right up, it goes red, which means I'm overloading it. With my interface, I find a 10 o'clock position on the volume control gives a good level of input without overloading. As for the transmitter, that needs to be on upper sideband and also Vox, as we're relying on the audio input from the computer to turn the transmitter on. As well as on the laptop, I found that my cable also worked with my Android mobile phone. Whisper transmitting was successful with a low-cost Android app.